groups can anyone tell me object oriented programming Ob object orientation program it helps the designing and uh, software organization designing software is helping okay object oriented programming object oriented programming is oops now object oriented yeah. programming means whatever i'm going to do based on that i'm going to have a particular uh i'm going to play with the object so object may behave differently object may look differently object may have its own properties based on this object properties this oops is going to consider so whatever you have learned till now the basic things like data types the type casting the if loop the for the arrays on top of everything so object is the one who is sitting on top of everything what i'm saying that on top of everything that means java is a oops language so when you are particularly or any oops language whenever you are learning or you are using this java in your coding the most important part which you're going to use is object day to day activity you're going to use the objects like you need one particular method from one class you are going to create object for that class so like that it will always go on go on go on go on and so so for these objects we have to set some properties what are the properties i'm talking about it may happen that my ob like the object i have created like it is available everywhere and it can give you all the methods from that particular class some of the objects may only show the outer shell what is inside of those methods and these things are not visible to you some objects may do one thing in my class and do some other thing in your class like same object but has two different properties in two different classes so objects behavior are controlled by the coder only whoever has implemented the object whoever has worked on those classes they are the only one who can control this behavior and that's why object has different types of behaviors like if i'm writing a code i will i may like create a particular property that's the same thing object is a representative of a house so if i am going somewhere as an invitation it would be more of a behavior like i have born and brought up in my family someone else will have a different tone like i'm a representative if kiobox calls today there would be all the employees gathered together and they all have their own properties someone is good with technology someone is good with the business model someone is good with the sales someone is good with the hr someone is good with creating framework someone is very good to implement utils in a framework so this type of different people will gather and they have their own property they have their own positivity and own drawbacks and this positivity negativity even may work that uh, i am the same person i create very good frameworks but i create good frameworks on uh, api and ui i don't have any idea about performance testing this is possible so every object will have their own property and based on that property we have to carefully use those objects where to call which particular object i need a requirement of performance testing should kiobox send me no there are performance testers in kiobox they can go there if there is an interview or the opportunity for api anyway will they send me yes of course if the experience matches they can send me so these all things matters now when we are talking about object oriented programming the first thing which comes is object so object when we are considering this object we are saying that object we are creating we are saying that boss whatever we are uh, whenever we need any particular um, method from any other class we are going to create object for that class and we will get those methods correct and it's not only that object is a huge important thing object itself is a class class of java object is a class of java so in java whatever the codes whatever the things you see any class a to z every class is under object class what do you mean by under object class we'll slowly come to that but remember object is also a class for java that means there is a class present in java which is named as object itself okay what is this property how it works you don't have to mind all these things now are we talking about this classes behavior here no we are talking about that 
object will be creating that behavior only. This particular OBJ behavior. So this OBJ behavior is based upon or limited upon four pillars. There are four pillars of OOPs. First pillar would be inheritance. Inheritance. Second Absence. pillar would be polymorphism. Polym Third Absence. pillar would be abstraction. Fourth pillar would be encapsulation. encapsulation. So these four are the pillars which is going to control your object, how they will behave, how it should behave, what is the result as a coder you can expect. These are the four pillars. And the names are like very simple. So if anyone says what is inheritance, anyone will say that getting the property from parent to child, right? My parent had a house by inheritance. I'm getting that property as the son of my father. Correct. That is called inheritance. So getting a property from parent yeah. to child. Yeah. This is called inheritance polymorphism. So to remember this because you might not remember easily poly means you guys know right poly means yeah. multiple. Multiple. multiple multiple and morph means face. So that an object which has multiple faces or you can think of as object face would be output. Right. How the objects will behave. So objects face would be output. So just to remember, I'm saying polymorph means multiple faces. So an object which has multiple faces and output. Abstraction. Abstraction is something. Uh, how can I say? Abstraction would be a perfect example of ATM machine. ATM. Like you just know that you have to get the money out. You don't know what the banks how the banks have configured this, what are the inner system working, where is the money, where this pin code is going, how it is connecting with the data server. You don't know anything, right? So abstraction is something that hiding the inner details. And showing the. Output. Outer shell and output to the user. So I'm hiding whatever inside it and then I'm just giving out boss this much outer shell you can see based on that you will get the output. Whatever is happening inside you don't have to care about that. That is something is called abstraction. And abstraction is a huge huge thing. Okay, the first three things whatever we have discussed inheritance polymorphism abstraction. These three things are huge like for as a tester you're going to use them the most encapsulation will be very less until unless you yourself is creating a framework or you're going ahead with a uh, project where you have to do everything from a scratch. You have to create the utils encapsulation. You are not going to deal with. But as a tester, I would say 90% time you're going to use this three only inheritance polymorphism abstraction. And what is encapsulation? Encapsulation means you can remember as a capsule. So uh, the capsule or tablets, whatever you guys have when we are sick, right? We have the capsules. So the capsules have a plastic container, right? Inside it, there are multiple medicines altogether. You guys have seen capsules, right? Home SD and those type of medicines. Like there is a plastic container for the medicine, and inside it, there would be a number of uh, medicines inside it. So encapsulation is something that putting all the things together which is this which is, is called in coding language is the wrapping up wrapping data wrapping, wrapping up class or method so this is coding language that wrapping up a class or method is called encapsulation but here as i said these three are very important so inheritance inheritance as i said it's like simple English meaning getting the property from a parent to child. 
how object will do it we'll see that that objects property inheritance how and can be who is parent here who is child here how it works we'll see everything don't worry about that just remember there are four pillars of oops even interviewer may ask as a fresher what are the four pillars of the oops inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation and they are dependent on the serialization as i said you may say encapsulation abstraction inheritance polymorphism even you will see some at some places in that sequence but if you for the ease of understanding even the flow of use until unless you do a inheritance you don't have polymorphism until unless you have a concept of inheritance and polymorphism together you can't have a concept of abstraction and encapsulation is a different unit totally you put it at the first or last it doesn't matter so inheritance polymorphism abstraction encapsulation these four topics are very important among this like the most most focus we are going to put on on the first three inheritance polymorphism and abstraction as i said inheritance is something getting a property from the parent to child like whatever the parent has to offer the child will have all those things polymorphism is something polymils multiple morph means faces so object will not have faces right object may have behavior and outputs so behavior and outputs so so what i'm saying that same object will behave something in my class same object may we have uh, something else in another class same object may behave in different way that is called polymorphism then we have the abstraction abstraction as i said abstract so you are abstracting someone from attending this class that means what you are abstracting means you are just not letting him inside the class you are not giving the details what is happening in that inside the session you are just telling me okay we are going through java it's something like that so abstraction means hiding the inner details whatever is happening or the code we have written something we don't want to show out to other people we are just showing them okay boss how ah, we are doing calculator how we are doing it how much gravity it has how complicated it is we are not putting it out to the user in front of it so achieving this uh, type of property for an object is also very important where user can only see the outer shell or the user can only see what he has to do that's it how the things are happening in the back end how the code has been written you don't need to give a mind there and that's mostly happens like whenever you would be working in any framework like see day to day you would be just doing the automation you will not know how the framework is working at most cases most of the people 80 percent of people will not know how the like the framework is working how they are interconnected how it's happening and encapsulation is something putting everything all together like i want to create a particular object property which can do everything which can like like i want to go to bangalore so that particular if i call that particular object then it will just uh, take the dates from me take the time from me take the number of persons from me then we'll book the ticket it will do the web check-in then it will successfully put the boarding pass in my as a download copy in my pdf viewer so these all steps should be done by a single class and that's what is called wrapping up class wrapping up method or wrapping up class means i am putting all the properties all together wrapped up in a particular class or in a method maybe so this is what it called encapsulation is so these four what i have written is the pillar now java uses all four of them okay for some other language some property might not be there some other language maybe some three are there one is not there there is a possibility all oops languages will not provide the support for all four there is a chance and java provides for all four java has the capability to provide all four oops concept to do and do play with and that's why java they say is a little bit hard to learn but once you have learned java every other language you can complete within few days so inheritance polymorphism abstraction and encapsulation clear till now any doubts uh, amta can we uh, yeah. consider method overloading as an example of polymorphism i uh, will come to that okay amita will you explain the encapsulation again please yeah encapsulation is something like uh, it's very easy the name came actually from capsules only like 
we we have seen this type of capsules where the medicines are there right inside yeah yeah we, we used to have medicines so this is a plastic capsule which wrap up maybe the medicine have three types or two types of combination levocetrazine montelukast there are different types of combinations are there so it's wrapping up different types of combinations and all this type of things all together in a capsule right this only one capsule can provide you with the remedy of two or three things all together that's what the encapsulation is so see when you are doing the day to day code you, your focus would be to make it more dynamic correct that user will yeah. like check the atm machine itself like you are just entering the pin you are just choosing the correct option savings account correct amount of money and the language and that's enough for it to do all the things in the background like uh starting a withdrawal process then giving you the correct amount of money then going back closing the connection and giving sending a sms back to your account from the bank service that was this much money has been withdrawn from your account so a single thing so day to day you would be creating a classes this class as i said right so i want to go from kolkata to bangalore so if i want to go kolkata to bangalore first i have to give a correct date then i have to give a correct number of persons then i have to um, then i have to give a time so it will search for the best option the cheapest option of flight which is a direct flight then it will book that flight automatically then it will do the web check in from that site once the mm. web check in is done it will download the pdf and then the pdf would be the output for me for the user i'm just entering three data and mm. here i'm getting the output and mm -hmm. all these things are getting provided through a single class that's what is a wrapped up class is that i have wrapped up these three things mm -hmm. these four things all together in a single class okay okay this particular uh, okay. class is only capable of choosing the flight this class is capable of filling the details this class is capable of web checking this class is capable of, capable of the okay, okay. downloading the passbook and okay when all these four capabilities are going on so if i'm getting all these properties in a single class do i need to call them individually anymore no right no not right uh, I'll, maybe I'll uh, we, can, the... we can uh, we can think like this amita uh, uh, if you want to initiate any uh, program uh, for us uh, having from end to end of uh, activities that are all takes place in the same class yeah, it's something like uh, yes yes so you can think like that so actually in market you can think like open source there were four classes differently present one class for choosing the flight one class for booking one class for giving the details one class for web check in okay, okay so okay. you you as a user that's why i said encapsulations are mostly created by who is creating the framework or who is the owner of the framework who is creating something dynamic so okay. i'm if i'm creating the framework i'll take all these open source for like possibilities all together merge it and i'll create a class boss i have created a class ease of flight ease of flight so now if you are using this particular uh if you are using this particular framework you would be okay. calling this particular class because you are getting all four properties all together inside it that's okay. what the encapsulation is wrapping okay. up okay. the available methods to make it with the better possibility okay okay amita got it thank you anyone anything else chinna uh, yeah yeah hi amita uh, not the term called uh, object uh, till now what we have been using uh, object is uh, we, we have been creating object uh, on with the object we have been calling the methods where it will provide some memory Uh, with the help of a class yes, uh, yes. Um, apart from these or uh, do we have any other properties for the uh, object uh see whatever we have done done till now we have seen how to create an object and how the objects helps us to access the methods right and yeah. all these properties whatever we are talking about now inheritance polymorphism encapsulation abstraction so these properties you are going to see while calling the methods itself so it will always call the methods only okay it's nothing like it's going to go ahead and do something else it would be always calling the methods only but now it will now you can like get the property like something how can i say 
but now this properties would be involved here you will see okay something was a parent but child is also getting it then you will know this object is behaving for inheritance you will be also calling a method i'll be also calling the same uh, same you will be calling an object i'll be calling an object so if our object are same it should call the same methods right it should give the same output but it might happen that my object is giving my method is giving some other output and your method called by your object is giving some other output you will know this is polymorphism so still till even till the last whenever you are creating the object you are going to call methods only nothing else you are going to do okay mostly so objects so, should be always so, you yeah the ultimate object to, of the object is to call the methods uh, with respect of the class the ultimate use for object is to give memory to those uh, particular methods which did, did not have any particular memory so because they were non-static they did not have any memory of in them in their own so objects property is to to give them a memory and to give them a notif uh, like name of that memory so whenever we are calling those methods we are calling that name i told you uh, you are not there maybe yesterday but when we are saying that a obj equals to new a correct so i told you the flow right so we are creating an object on behalf of this class and then equals to new is allocating the memory right allocating yeah. the allocate creating and allocating the memory so how much memory is needed who will give that constructor right yeah, so constructor. constructor constructor will come and say boss i need 30 bytes of space so once among your gbs of ram you are getting 30 bytes stored here ram i'm saying okay not rom in your gbs of ram you are getting 30 bytes stored here this 30 byte is named as obj so whenever you are saying obj dot what is happening the compiler is referring to this space and whatever is available here that is coming with that list you are seeing in the eclipse whatever is available in that particular space and that's how you will be calling those methods or maybe variable variable also can be called by object whatever is non-static variable those can be called also objects uh like how can i say till now you got huh. so i don't know if you guys have practiced this you guys can't maybe oh, you guys can't okay leave it objects property is to call the uh, methods from where it where you need to access them okay like today you are working on a class called array so in the class of array if i need the scanner i'll be calling the scanner class and creating an object for it right so in my class, there is no way, no reference was there for scanner. So, but I need the help of this class, some property of that class I need. So I created an object for that class and through this scan dot, every time I'm getting all the properties for the class, correct? Whatever it, this class has to offer. So objects also goes ahead and helps you to get the properties of some other class in your class if you need, like, uh, it's something like you are going ahead to the market and you remembered that, okay, I need to buy the tomatoes from that shop. So you'll be going to that shop only, right? When, where the tomatoes are fresh. So you are using a class, you are doing your code and you need some help from there. So you'd be calling upon that particular help through creating an object. So objects helps you to present or to create the code with help of anything. So through object, you are accessible to that whole scanner class. Like that, you, you may have created one class which uh, which will help you to go to the market and come back from the market, the vehicle. But so you will be just, first you will call that particular object, use that to go to the market. Then you will do your market thing in that market class. And at the last again, you will be calling that vehicle object so that you can go back to your home. Objects in programming language, yes, object helps you to call the methods. Now, how these methods are getting called, how, which method I'm getting, which output I'm getting, how it is working, where, which class from these methods are coming. These all are based on this four particular properties, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation. Object is not gonna change its functionality. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, one more doubt. Uh... Uh, comes to encapsulation so in the encapsulation or do we uh, will you be uh, hide the inner code and whatever needed to be present to the user or only it can be done over abstraction only it is mostly done by achieving abstraction only that inner code we are hiding and we are showing user only whatever is needed 
but when it's very simple see when i said like there are four class like four different properties were available in the market that you have to book the flights you have to give the details you have to wait check in you have to print like download the pdf now i have attached all four together i have created my own capsule where all four are available correct now among this all four automatically some of the details is getting hidden right when you do encapsulation you create it in your own way like i'll be creating my own class where i would just jumble all those four together and i will ask for the user just give me your this much this three or four data so i'll give you at the end your pdf that's it so it may happen okay i'm not saying that when you are doing the encapsulation abstraction will not happen at all it may happen but we don't term it abstraction until unless we use the keyword abstract actually so i don't think in encapsulation we have to use the keyword abstract putting the data in uh, same place yes okay yeah, yeah thank you amitam anything else guys nice no yeah. okay cool cool so we are going ahead with inheritance for the day inheritance will itself take two days maybe so inheritance so what you have learned for inheritance inheritance means getting the property from parent to child whatever is there so whatever parent has to offer that particular property will come from parent to a child now how it works now how it works okay let me check okay so uh, how can i think so just suppose there is a ha huh, you have you guys heard of the organization try yes yeah telecom yes. regulation authority of oh. india yeah. yeah so what they do they have bounded some rules yeah. for any telecom operator in india right that was if you want to be in the market you have to uh, give the users to give an opportunity of call and this has to be in the moderate rate from like in previous days it used to be like 0.1 paisa per second to something so it has to be in the moderate rate you have to give users the sms you have to give users the data connection and that has to be like from 2g to 5g anything and you have to the privacy you have to maintain for the user you can't leak the data phone numbers and all so try must have given some uh, rules bound for the users to have it correct now we have different markets here in airtel jio vodafone idea vi so we have different types of bsnl we have different regulate like different particular uh, companies in the market so when they are in this market if they are doing the business in india obviously they have to regulate to try correct they always have to regulate to the particular whatever try has to offer so airtels are also giving you the call service airtels are also, also giving the sms data privacy everything jio is also giving on top of it they might have something of their own like airtel is giving airtel finance bank that's airtel's own property Jio is also giving you all these things, and Jio is also giving you the Jio entertainment system, Jio cinema. So, like that, every particular whoever is working has got their own ownership from their parent. So, for here, Airtel, Jio, Vodafone, BSNL, for everyone, the parent is Try. Try has set some regulations. By default, if they want to do the business, Airtel, Jio has to implement it. There is no way that you can miss any particular parent property. so same way you can think like we have the rbi so rbi sets some regulations on top of it it works for sbi it works for indian bank yeah, yeah indian any particular yeah. bank yeah. sdfc yeah so for any bank whoever wants to operate in india they have to regulate with sbi on top of it they may give some their own of the property it's same as our inheritance uh, like human inheritance structure also like our parents have something from the parents the child gets everything 
everything and child may have its own property right like my parent had houses but no car i got the house for my parent but with my own income i have got a car it is possible right yes yes sir yeah yeah and the same thing which happens in case of object also so object will get every property from parent what is parent what is child i'll come to that and object may have some of property when it's in the child class the same way now to before start the inheritance we have to know few things few terms first is super class super class is nothing but the parent class if anywhere anywhere we don't like for me you can see uh, me calling it mostly parent or super anything so if i'm saying parent it's a super if i'm saying super it's a parent okay so super class is the parent like coding definition of parent class then we have the subclass subclass is nothing but you can guess already it's a child class <sighs> okay and now we have one more keyword here that is extends Ex extends is something that it's kind of a will in our term okay so parents when you want to give something to the child they write the will right so extends is a keyword which gives the will that boss whatever the parents forward is there is going to happen for the child so how it works so just suppose child class extends parent class yeah. that means subclass will always extend the super class that's the flow now inheritance are also this is clear super class subclass and extends yes sir yes sir so yes, that means yes, i'm saying i'm saying that uh, public there is a public class just suppose parent only okay there is a class like this there is something inside i'm not going ahead and i have another class public class child oh sorry i have given braces here public class child so if i now want to extend the parent class what i'll say i'll say extends parent class that's it extends then the class name which i want to extend that's it so that means now child got inherited from this parent that's why the extends keywords comes in between clear now the types of inheritance types of inheritance what are the types of inheritance we have we have single level i'll come to this multi multi, multi level multi level single level then you have higher kl or something spelling multi -level. as well multi -level. and we have multiple, multiple. so multiple we have four inheritance and multi level come down come down come down so single level multi level higher kl and multiple so this type four types of inheritance may happen so why i'm saying four types of inheritance may happen one second let me make it easy for me so when when we are saying that single level means there would be one like there would be from parent to child that's it this is single level and when we are saying multi level means there is grandparent from the grandparent to parents from grandparents to child first you are clear right so that means i have a parent i have a child so it's something you can think of like animals animals have the tiger inside it right animal would be a basic property that it has to has four legs it has to have one tail it has to has one face two eyes two ears correct so animals would be the parent child would be the tiger that whenever there is a tiger born they are by default having all the properties of animals correct yes no what are you saying i haven't seen a yeah, tiger then yes. i'll, then yes, I'll yes, go yes. for some yes. other example <laughs> 
yeah so animals has so maybe animal has four properties inside it okay four functions that it has four legs one tail two ears two eyes and it has it will be eating meat okay now from the parent the child is tiger here i'm saying so tiger will have all these properties right tiger will have all these properties of an animal plus tiger would have its own property which would be like its own color its behavior uh it's uh, omnivorous yeah this type of properties will come with the tiger but from animal if i have another child which is cow the animal's properties are same right four legs one tail uh, face ears eyes everything is same but it's herbivorous it's more of a domestic uh animal so like that we can we may have different childs which may have different properties but when you are saying about the grandparents, what is happening here? So grandparent is animals. Then the parent is tiger. But then we have the tiger cubs. So whatever the tiger has a property, tiger cub will have everything. Right? But the tiger cub may have their property of own. Like they have milk at the very small age. And they uh, don't know how to hunt. They have to get the hunt. So they have their own properties, which are like animals, all properties they have got. Tigers, all properties they will get. But tiger calves has also their own properties. They have their own behavior. Behavior. They drink milk and like like that. They have to learn how to hunt. So that's how it's single level and multiple multi level. Clear. Like even you can think of vehicles. Vehicles vehicles is just like grandparent. Then we have the cars. Now from the cars we may have BMW. We may have Mercedes. We may have Bugatti. Volvo. Bugatti. Yeah yeah so anything so that's how so vehicles means something what people wanted to say it has only one property that it should allow people to go one place to another place very fast from there i got the cars cars gave the property that boss you have to have four wheels you have to have one steering you have to have brakes you have to have comfort at least of sitting of five from there the other companies utilize their own property bmw has its own structure own power own engine own exhaust note everything Volvo has different safety patterns. Uh, any particular company will, they are creating cars only, right? They have all the properties of the cars, but they have their own unique style, correct? From the vehicles, I could have came to trains. Trains is also another way. From trains, I may have got uh, Vande Bharat, I may have Satabdi, I may have Express trains, I may have the, you no, know, those trains which takes the coal, what did this is. Anyhow. So this type of trains, there are different types of trains are there, passenger train, local train. So they have their own property. They have their own sitting capacity. Some trains will have sleeping capacity. All not are same, right? So that is called single level and multi-level. And that's what I'm saying that you will always get all the properties from the parent. No doubt on that. Parents' properties will come to you. But there is a chance child may or may not have its own feature. May not have, that is also possible, right? like my grandparent gave my parent a house very good my parents got the house so by default i also got the house my parent had its own feature like sorry not feature like something new of their own that they have got a car so i got the car also so i got the house from my grandparent basically i got the house from my parent basically but like i am one of those guys who didn't earn one single penny in my lifetime so i didn't get anything of my own so there is a chance child may not have any property of its own also. It's not mandatory if child has to have something of its own. Clear, right? Single level, multi level. Yes, and yes. hierarchical actually we have seen already. So when we are saying cars, from there we are getting multi, multiple options, right? BMW, Volkswagen, Volvo, and uh, anything like whatever, Mercedes. So all these things, so this is called hierarchical. So we are getting multiple childs are there for a single parent. Then that type of inheritance is called hierarchical. 
okay this is called hierarchical when there is a single parent but multiple childs like we saw for the animals animals may have tigers cows dogs and in number of animals that they are present so this type of inheritance will call it as hierarchical and then we have multiple multiple means now the parents are multiple two parents parent one parent two and from the parent one parent two i'm getting a child's property so child will get both the property of parent one and the property of parent two this is called multiple inheritance okay so what we have learned today quickly so we have learned four pillars of hoops remember this one liners interviewers may ask what is the inheritance we have learned parent to child we have learned superclass subclass extends we have learned what is the syntax for this this is a syntax and we have learned what are the different types of inheritance single level multi-level hierarchical multiple clear yes, so this yes, is all for now okay um, and i I'm have a stand up to attend yeah can you explain hierarchical inheritance ones hierarchical means just remember one parent in number of childs okay one parent in number of childs means cars was the parent but then i have multiple child like bmw volkswagen everything right they all are implementing the same parent so basically one parent multiple childs is called hierarchical cool so i'll ask questions tomorrow on this whatever we have discussed today and don't miss the sessions till oops collection exception i don't want anyone discount to go down by if anyone doesn't want to continue that's free feel free to go out but if anyone wants to continue and i see it one day or two days later again everyone is here that would be bad so 23 people i want everyone to attend cool that's all thank you guys thanks thank you sir thank you have a nice day thank you amitabh bye thank you bye bye thank you thank you amitabh bye thank you amitabh thank you thank you amitabh